overall strategy for crypto and gradually getting into NFTs and how to curate and collect NFTs. So before we do that, just a little bit on Jennifer. She is a co-founder and chair of New Chick Capital. That's her single family office. Um, she is a founding partner of ACE Investment Management, which is a woman-led hedge fund. Um, she's also a founder and director of Glamit, which is a beauty and fashion lifestyle technology brand. She has also held multiple management positions in international corporations and a, just a serial entrepreneur. So, Jennifer, could you give us a flash of mic? Are you there? Are you with us? Yes. Brilliant. So, look, the, the stage is yours, Jennifer, um, and we are looking forward to the masterclass this morning. So, the button is yours. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Um, I want to conduct this more as sort of like a, a group masterclass because I know that there's a, probably a lot of questions people have. Um, that was a great intro. I'm honored to be here. Uh, I've started also live streaming as well on um, Instagram so that uh, those of you uh, can you know take advantage of the fact that I was earlier on another media interview and uh, I see about a bunch of you have joined me already. Uh, I couldn't get my Facebook uh, live set up in time, but it's okay. Um, I'm here in the Winners Club, Breakfast with Winners. I love being a part of this community, uh, learning daily as well as uh, being able to moderate some, um, as well as uh, being able to dive deeper into uh, crypto, NFTs, uh, funds. A lot of people ask me what um, a family office is. So I'm going to uh, rewind a bit. Um, I used to be uh, a creator. I was an actress and a model, a concert pianist as well. And um, I was a piano prodigy. And I actually started my um, entrepreneurship journey as a high schooler. I started property investing and investing and, and doing things uh, with my family. Uh, and they were great role models for me. And I learned a lot about traditional investments as well as property development, as well as property. And um, I continued that on uh, throughout high school. I actually started my own companies as well as college. So some of the tech companies I worked at, um, uh, as well as started, uh, were community and platform based. Uh, one was actually the predecessor to Facebook. And uh, two of the ones I worked at while in college were acquired by Yahoo. So I had my experience with exits early on. Then when I went uh, to New York and started um, acting and modeling and actually working at a hedge fund there, I subsequently went to two Google competitors, started um, building a book of business. So I did about 10 million uh, US in sales a month. And I realized quickly that there was a glass ceiling uh, in tech, especially for women, uh, and especially for non entrepreneurs, unless, um, you know, I did more beyond uh, what I call invest other people's budgets and invest other people's money. So OPM means other people's money, right? And the reason why I love crypto web 3.0 and even started my foray into tech is because I wanted to start investing MOM, which is my own money. So let's flash forward. I actually uh, so I grew up in the US. And then one of the things I realized is that, you know, time is money. Right. So uh, and it's very important to spend your time doing the right things, whether you're learning and collaborating with the right people. Like I try to always, uh, you know, watch my time really religiously. I guard it very religiously. So I do that here on Clubhouse as well. I don't just go to anyone's rooms. I go to like people that I'm partnering and working with long term, people I really respect. So I do that off of Clubhouse as well. And I do that, um, you know, uh, in general with my life, because I think like, you know, beyond crypto and community and content, curation is also key. So uh, when, now I'm going to uh, go flash forward to while I was in uh, business school. I did the same as I did in um, college, which is um, I realized that, uh, you know, if I was um, there on a really sizable uh, scholarship um, at Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, and I'd already had a Ivy League degree behind me, uh, I used that time like no other. Um, so I uh, worked at three startups, a fund as well as uh, working uh, to kind of save my own money and make my own in continue making my own angel investments. Because uh, since I had a merit scholarship, a lot of my room and board was already paid for. So because this is no longer my time, I use that to maximize my investments and to build up my own business acumen and to continue. And one thing that's very exciting about Web 3.0 is that it's like a fast forward to being able to do that yourself more quickly, right? So a lot of uh, what I learned along the way was earning my own stripes. Uh, fast forward again, uh, while I was in uh, business school, some of the startups I was at were acquired. And then I actually worked at another one that was a listed company called Rackspace, um, which uh, there I actually, my, my technology clients, and bear in mind, I still wanted to save money. So I lived in my dorm. I was making a, a sizable income already, um, like 
high six figures. <laughs> and then I had commission because I was selling about um, anywhere of, uh, up to a $100 million book of business a month. And my clients were like Twitter and uh, Zynga, like big gaming companies, right? And I, I believed in sowing those seeds and making those relationships early because I knew eventually I wanted to do bigger and bigger investments, right? As, as well as, uh, uh, so one of my clients, uh, for example, he, you can see him on my investment committee today. He is, uh, um, he sold his, um, company to Zynga, which is a big, uh, I mean, you guys might remember Farmville and games like that, but his company became a part of Zynga. And then he sold his other company after that to, um, to uh, uh, Uber, it was a company called Postmates, uh, and he's also the co-founder of a camp company called Sandbox, right? And I'm very lucky to have him and other folks like that on my investment committee. If you want to take a look at my investment committee, which is my own family office, meaning my own money, it would be nushicapital.com. And I think there's uh, more credence when you see people like me. I'm a, so uh, after working at that, um, you know, big tech uh, conglomerate rack space and doing, you know, cloud computing servers and realizing uh, a big sign of a company scaling up is when they start getting very disorganized and their, their data is kind of all over the place and their servers start crashing. So that's how I realized it's almost like an earthquake. You see where there's seismic activity and where people are going, and then you can predict where the winners are going to be. So then um, I joined a startup shortly after that. It got acquired by Groupon within a few months. Then I joined another one and I grew us to 150 million US revenue. We scaled from about 12 employees to about 200 employees in six months and then to several thousand employees within a year. And uh, I was giving a sort of a, a, a keynote speech at one of the tech conferences. And then we met one of the billionaires that actually then acquired us. And um, we IPO'd on the Australian Stock Exchange in under two years. So from start to finish, uh, uh, beginning of the company to IPO was less than two years. And then with that exit, I started building my other companies, my other projects, but also investing in other entrepreneurs. Uh, as well as emerging fund managers. This is where I think it's very important. So since this is a funds masterclass, I would like to tell you what I do as a private investor. So family office, I'm sure you guys can look up the definition, but it basically means you have a certain amount of liquidity and you can invest in other uh, companies as well as funds. Now, I think it's important to uh, invest in funds too, because I get to be surrounded by like people, I call them smarter than me. So not only are we in LPs in crypto hedge funds and hedge funds and VC funds, but we are uh, that you, you want to basically surround yourself with people who are very smart investors. So you learn how to capture that alpha. When you say seeking alpha, that means, you know, you see things before other people do necessarily. And then you can act on them faster because all of it is about, you know, having access to that knowledge, having access and then, you know, putting in that hard work beforehand. So definitely I wouldn't have been able to en enter those circles if I hadn't built up my uh, sort of depth of experience in tech, as well as building up my um, experience and being a serial exit entrepreneur. So that uh, e-commerce unicorn, which IPO'd and became a leader in Southeast Asia, and just in Hong Kong, we built up to 150 million US revenue a year. We actually did it without even taking VC funding. Although a lot of VCs were courting us, the revenue got so huge that we didn't even need to take outside funding or dilution. So one thing that I think is very important is that um, that company, as well as some of the others we co-invested with, that company, um, some of the founding team uh, went on to found a company called Crypto.com, which is a very huge player in the space. They recently bought the Staples Center in LA. I'm sure. Can you give me a flash of the mic so you guys have heard of Crypto.com? Oh, cool. Okay, great. <laughs> That's good. That means like people are not like living under a rock. So what crypto.com is, is, is an exchange and it's a way also to accelerate the adoption of crypto. So like full disclosure, one of the things I think people can do to like get a little more exposure to crypto is um, use it in their everyday life. So I'm not necessarily saying like, oh, go buy an NFT, go do this, go do that. But one of the things I do is I use two uh, crypto debit cards. So basically every time I get cash back, I don't get cash back. I get crypto back which I think accelerates my sort of use case for it in daily scenarios, as well as onboards people more quickly. So one of the things we learned from building that e-commerce unicorn uh, and exiting was that, you know, tech was huge, but fintech, financial, like basically people opening wallets. I remember when we partnered with PayPal, we did like several million in revenue in a day. We sold like, I think was it, oh my goodness, like half a million frozen yogurts. And it was insane because like it was being covered on like, you know, it was covered on Fox Media, CBS Media, it was, uh, um, BBC also ran a story on us. And, uh, you know, I was inv invited to interview at several after the exit because I mean, it was kind of unprecedented the records we were setting back then because back then a lot of people were like, 
Jennifer, that sounds so silly. Why would people buy anything online? And now we know, like, you know, not only e-commerce is king. I mean, that's a, a given. But like now the other thing that we learned from that is communities are king. So because from that, we built like several million, um, you know, email database. Um, we were able to basically make sure that, you know, the point of a little bit in the the background so sorry about that um but uh yeah i see some of you are joining the <laughs> instagram live as well um appreciate it so those of you in my instagram live this is also going um simulcasting uh the majority of the audience is over at the winners club please follow the winners club on clubhouse and join me on clubhouse as well um with uh my uh amazing uh, mod squad here ashley uh ashley shipman and we have um we have paul abercrombie uh we have james burt and uh, we have uh, also the lovely Carol Massey on stage. Okay, so this why I hope is a, 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 like an introduction uh, to you know how I got into Web 3.0. The other thing that was uh, really important for me, uh, not only investing in you know, uh, uh, so I call it investing in the riders as well as the horses. You don't want to make only direct investments. That's risky. Just like I wouldn't say like, oh, go only invest in coins, go only invest in, um, you know, an NFT. Don't go, you know, you shouldn't do that. Like what people do, what people with high net wealth do. Oh, thank you. I see a lot of heart emojis on my Instagram live. Thank you so much, Eli Fashion Lover. Yes, but what, what a lot of people have to remember to do is you want to diversify. Even the best fund managers, you're not going to put everything into one asset class. Same with crypto and same with NFTs, right? So one thing you have to always be mindful of is to um, look like as you would uh, 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 investment deck as you would anything you would look at the underlying team do it have a good track record look at the fundamentals look at the roadmap look at the utility look at the sustainability of this project you know i'm actually a very bullish on what uh, the winners club will be doing as they foray into web 3.0 because they built the community right and the the underpinnings of any successful metaverse and full disclosure we've invested in over eight metaverses at this point and i'll have an exciting uh uh, announcement. Uh, we've also co-invested alongside, you know, the likes of Crypto.com, Animoca. Some of their folks are on my investment committee. Um, and uh, the definition of family office, by the way, is that it's my own money. It's my own exit money, right? So, um, and then some of the people on my investment committee, they're also serial exited entrepreneurs and investors. They're investing also their own money or they're co-investing along my side. And then if we make bigger bets or we uh, have uh, our own funds uh, right now with my, my uh, friend, we have many, many millions under management, it's private management, privately managed, but we're in the process of setting it up so we can include others uh, in that journey as well, as well as reward some of our co-investors who've been uh, impact investing along our side. We actually invest in an amazing UK company that uh, is involved with climate and climate, ex uh, sorry, climate change and algorithms. So I think there's a lot of ways to plug it all in. And one of the reasons why um, I love having a family office is that my portfolio companies, I treat them as my kids, right? They're, they're like, each one can cross pollinate with another. We want as many winners in the portfolio as possible. So what we do is a combination of investment, but also strategic advice and making sure they can partner with others and other verticals. Like for example, like if there's one community, uh, one, for example, I'm, uh, I, I think, oh, some of you guys, uh, so my Clubhouse DMs are broken. If you wanna follow me and DM me on Instagram, it works. Um, but some of the functionality in Clubhouse is actually blocked for me um, being in greater China, Hong Kong region. So even like Ashley, when we message each other, it's, you know, <laughs> over um, other messaging services. So uh, yeah, I appreciate it. I see a lot of like um, back channel messages building up. But some of you I know were asking me about my profile picture. And I love my NFT so much that I dressed up as her. So this particular artist did close to 80 million in sales on OpenSea. And one of the reasons why we teamed up with her is we thought like, wow, you know, she is a, has a massive following, almost a million following on social media, very uh, great aesthetic. And uh, the other reason why is because uh, their, their tech lead is the lead of Coinbase. He's also my investment committee, full disclosure, as well as we saw a lot of like other people like, you know, Steve Aoki, the metaverse partnering up. But I also introduced them to my other portfolio companies, including one that had uh, a fitness metaverse that had a major um, IPO and ICO in the last year and recently uh, called Olivex, which uh, uh, Anna Mocha had put me on the advisory board for. And uh, I've been on, you know, doing that for the last several years. And what is what I think is very key to, um, note here is that they were I invested in them and I started advising them before they announced they were a metaverse because what you need to look at is the underlying again the community the tribe the people the projects you're investing in and then see how open they are to collaboration 
So collaboration, uh, thank you. Shell Bell and others are saying that NFT is beautiful. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, so um, those of you tuning in on Instagram Live, make sure to go on to Clubhouse. This is a live um, session happening right now in the Winners Club. I'm so happy to do this exclusively with uh, Ashley, Paul, uh, uh, James, and Carol. And I'll let you guys in on some of my um, secrets. So whenever I look at, for example, a uh, crypto coin or project. And, you know, some of my friends have some of the most, like, uh, you know, the top 50 coins on the exchange. So I'm not going to, you know, plug and chug. I always look at the sustainability because you don't want to have a, what you call a pump and dump, which is like similar to when you, someone, some company IPOs and then their share price drops. And that's not good for anyone because even the original holders, you have a lockup period, for example, like several months, maybe a year afterwards, right? So it's no one's interest, not mine for sure. I'm there for the long term. And so I'm not a trader by any means. And one of the reasons why I have family office is because there are people who trade better than me. So I will like go and uh, give it to my, uh, for example, my best friend. I'm so sorry. It looks like a connectivity. Okay. You guys can still hear me, right? Flash of the mics if you can still hear me. Okay, cool. Did a quick mic check with uh, Ashley. It says I'm still here. Great. So um, the main thing is that like you want to surround yourself with people who are better than you at what they do. So one of my crypto teams, for example, they trade around the clock. So they have people in different time zones. They have like, they trade with algos, they trade with uh, bots and they're, they're really amazing. You know, Bitcoin did 5,000% in returns over a certain period. They did 20,000% in returns over the same period. So one of the reasons why I, I obviously didn't bet the farm on them, you know, just I, I bet a sizable amount, but the same as when I ventured into crypto um, several years back. Like uh, my husband thought I was crazy. I took a backpack full of cash and I was like, can you be my bodyguard? I went over to one of the exchanges here and I was like, hey, I'd like to have some Bitcoin. And then everyone was like, I literally had my husband bodyguarding me because I was just like, and he was like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, this is my hard wallet and this and that. And then one of the reasons why I think it's so exciting is that, you know, it's a way of trying. And, and I would never say hold everything in, you know, crypto is so volatile that it's very important. Like one of the reasons why I look at funds is like exchange traded, traded funds or different funds. It's important to, you know, really diversify. Right. And if you're young, OK, fine. 10% of your net worth or more can be in crypto. That's fine. But if you're like, uh, you know, if you have like obligations, like, you know, mortgage, kids, if you're getting on your years, don't, you know, just only invest what you can afford to lose. I would do that with any asset class, right? You don't want to overextend yourself. Unless like, for example, you're balancing out other things, like look at the macro trends, look at the interest rates, look at other things. I mean, obviously the, the, the other thing I would also say, like, please, like, you know, look at my background too. I, I can afford to take more risks because I already have like, you know, exited um, several, you know, uh, I have actually close to 30 exits as an entrepreneur and an investor. Um, I've been through the block. I've been burned before too. So I'm just letting you know that like, you know, if you are, you know, working on purchasing your first home, don't, and you know, take out the down payment and go and, you know, do crazy things with it. For sure, don't do that, right? Um, I, uh, you know, for full disclosure, my family is in commercial, residential. We also have hotel uh, and other, you know, uh, types of um, uh, businesses. So definitely like, even with me, one of the reasons why my family office, I'm focused more on the tech side of things is because that's my batting average. I've been good at it. I've been good at seeing things early and then holding for long term. Right. And then, you know, several of my investment committee, I'm not going to disclose whether I have one or not, are part of the BAYC, which is Board Ape Yacht Club. Those things are like close to half a million or more <laughs> um, uh, each. And like, I would say like, you know, you have to view NFTs as being part of just like a JPEG. Okay, so I'm going to drill down a little bit into that. You have to look at it as like, do you like it? If it does not resonate with you, don't get it. Wait around until you saw something you really like. Or if you're going to mint something, see if you want to first. Because like I've already, uh, if you guys go to my OpenSea wallet, I have a public wallet there. You can see some of the things that I've collected. You know, I love the Time Magazine drop. I love different things. You know, I've been on the premium whitelist, which means access to some of these projects. Um, and then one of the things I do for my comi uh, com community is that I like let them get airdrop certain things. I like to share share the wealth, so to speak, right? And I think, you know, everyone can get started with like, a little bit, right? And then just don't bet the farm on any one thing. Remember to like, you know, diversify. And then uh, the other thing is also like, um, there's a, something we call stable coins as well, right? So Bitcoin, Ethereum, those are, if you look at the market cap for the certain coins, if it's a high market cap and there's a high volume of trading, that means, okay, there's liquidity. It's okay. It should be like more or less pretty safe. I would also, if you're like investing coins, I would do a basket. I wouldn't necessarily be like, let me do like, Two coins only. Of course, you can 
be, you know, have more in certain coins, but I wouldn't go chasing mean coins, right? And I would also make sure that, for example, if you wanted to do the breakfast with winners um, or the winners club coin and get in on that as they, you know, tokenize and enter Web 3.0 and, you know, develop uh, and discuss, discuss their own metaverse plans, which I'm excited to maybe talk about them more <laughs> offline about that. Very exciting, it looks like. But um, in terms of the roadmap, you want to make sure that this is something you resonate with people you like you want to life is too short to like invest in people you don't like right and life is too short to be a part of things that you don't like you know time is one of those scarce change changing the tape on my recording but um one of the things that is very very important is to realize that you have limited time and you you can't you know go buy everything you can't fomo or what they say uh in crypto you can't go ape into everything you can't be like oh and then by the time you see something that's a, a trend once you go tracing it it's more than likely the alpha is already gone so if you want to chase it and you believe in it, then hold it for longer. Don't sit around there and being like, let me flip it. So that's what I'm hoping, like if you're going to go look at the Winners Club coin later, that you hold it, you be a part of the community. One of the reasons why the best NFTs succeed is you have you find those people who are what they call diamond hands, meaning you they're the people who are long-term holders and supporters. They're the people who will introduce you into other communities and add value, add in terms of growth, introduce other holders and investors and um, and people who are there not to flip you short-term. Like if you want to be a long-term holder, then go for it. But if you're going to be like someone like, oh my goodness, I need to sell it within 12 out, that is called what, what we call paper hands. So no, what no one wants on the cap, cap table is people like not wanting to, you know, stay there for the long run. Like for me, like sometimes I love the NFT so much, even if they're gifted to me, I go buy like several more gifted to my, you know, business partners, my friends, because like who wouldn't want to get in on something awesome, right? And then uh, I see, uh, you know, NFTs as well as crypto and metaverse as the tip of the iceberg. NFTs in general, people will find that very accessible, sometimes more so than coin because there's a visual uh, representation, there might be an audio representation, there may be a live um, use case function, um, you know, plugins to certain metaverses and communities. But at the same time, I would caution against like saying like, okay, you know, um, this NFT has to perform a certain way. Like for example, you know, Animoca and crypto.com, they were both penny stocks. Okay, people thought I was crazy for holding. They were like, what is wrong with you? Like, why would you like, what, what is crypto? Like, this is ridiculous. And now everyone's like asking me like, oh, Jennifer, do you have you heard of like this coin? Have you learned? And the thing is, it's not about the coins. It's not about the protocol. It's not about it's about the cross chain, the linkages and the potential. Right. You're investing in the potential. So obviously you don't want to be investing in something when it's sky high. You want to invest in something when it's accessible. You want to hold it and grow it. You want to use it. And you want to be able to be a, a value add person. If you're going to sit there and be a paper hand and complain about the price, then don't hold it. Right. So it's always a, a buyer beware, a investor beware sort of a scenario. And what I love about crypto and what I love about um, Web 3.0 is it allows people who are consumers also to make their way into becoming investors in their own right because now you know you see a lot of these very successful folks on stage they uh, ashley paul james carol they're entrepreneurs and they are investors they are hybrids but what they are also which i think is the triumvirate is that they're creators and community builders and that's what we need now in the rise of this community-led creator-led economy you know there's uh, people are also talking about DAOs, dao which is decentralized authority organization right and that is actually the future of a lot of governance not just in terms of companies in the web 3.0 space but we're, we're going to see the ramifications of that in a lot of the real world um and other companies as well we'll see that trickle down effect so um i'm gonna pause here and see if like ashley paul james carol and uh, those of you in the stage have any questions um it's really great i see like several hundred people have joined me on my instagram live over the course and appreciate you guys giving your time during the day as well brilliant uh brilliant thank you very much for that information this morning jennifer so Guys, what I want to do is welcome some questions towards Jennifer around crypto, NFT funds, um, and future and collecting and curating NFTs. Who is there in the room that would like to jump in and ask a question? Who is there and who wants to share anyone around? Guys, are you there? I can hear, no, I can hear, uh, Toby, good morning. Good morning, all. Uh, hi, Jennifer. Hi, uh, hi. Very quick one. Very quick one. What are your thoughts on the Cardano network? Oh, uh, Cardano. Actually, okay. So I'm a Cardano holder. I'm a Solano holder. I'm. I. I actually love. 
I'm, I'm okay. I'm network agnostic as long as it wouldn't play together, right? I don't have a crystal ball. I think Tezos is also doing some very cool things in the space because they're very um, uh, inclusive and they've built like, you know, outposts in like the uh, African continent as well, right? So uh, I think as long as um, people are not building silos around each other, I don't want to like, you know, give like um, very specific um, investment information. But I am a fan of those that can include uh, gamification communities as well as other utilities. So I am a fan of Cardano and I do hold some Cardano. Thank you. Brilliant. Um, who else is there? Flash your mics. So anything around NFT? Kai, good morning. Good morning. Uh, thanks, Ashley. And Jennifer, it's great to see you again. I uh, just want to acknowledge this amazing journey and story. Um, I have a quick question because I know so many people on the stage. Uh, I'm about to launch, uh, launch my own coin. So I need some advice here. So Jennifer, so if I launch a new coin, how what would be the kind of like top list of other coin I need to make sure that uh, my coin also uh, kind of like uh, connect with? And I know ETH, Ethereum definitely, and, and Polygon as well as, um, um, uh, <coughs> as, well as uh, Solana. But uh, any, any other uh, suggestions, please? Uh, I think you have uh, uh, identified some of the stable, I think, coins and chains right now. There's others that are emerging. Um, I would also suggest that if you're launching your own coin, like I actually, as an experiment, I did BitClout like a year ago and my coin went to 100,000 market capitalization within two days. And I think one of the people, what, what people look for when they look for coin is uh, like a real sustainable, like, you know, I don't think it's enough anymore to be like, oh, I'm an influencer, I'm a blogger, oh, I have, I'm launching my coin because I can see the amount of like community so if you're going to launch your own coin or your own project, make sure you're growing your community on um, Discord, Telegram, and others as well. Make sure you have good community managers. Make sure you're not going at it alone. I know like Ashley, Paul, uh, James, they have like a real like team here, right? And they bring in like different experts to like come and like drill down deeper. But one of the more important things is that unless you're like a celebrity, your coin won't stand on its own if it's tied to an individual. Right. So for mine, one of the reasons why it was stayed in like some of the other, co uh, sorry, investors, uh, sorry, the other, uh, the investors in Clubhouse, some of the ones who were earlier than um, Andreas and Horowitz and some of the other, you know, folks on my investment committee, um, even they personally went to try to go get my coin is because uh, any people I didn't know, uh, like Naval's brother and other people were getting my coin. It's because they heard me play piano and they realized like, oh, my gosh, she's a concert pianist and it's good. And then they would they, they, they looked at my you know track record. Um, in terms of being an entrepreneur and investments and, you know, other things I do. So that's why it would hold value because it's not what you call, um, uh, sorry, this is a bad word, but people uh, like sometimes people when they want to um, say, you know, mean things in the crypto community about other coins, they call it shit coin, right? But there's some that like literally I don't know why they exist um, and you should never like be in a coin, um, you know, extremely beware. You're not going to be faster than a trader or a crypto trader or a hedge fund trader if um, there is like, you know, a momentum due to, um, you know, random tweets from people, for example. Like people, uh, that's like called a hiccup, right? And you don't want to like uh, play around with that. And you also want to smooth that out. So um, I'd rather see a coin gradually rise than a sharp spike and like, you know, crazy volatility. But then the crazy volatility is also okay for me because um, we have, you know, the hedge funds and other partners and uh, the investments where they're like, you know, de-hedging our risks. But those of you who don't have that, I'd rather just, you know, uh, uh, in terms of any coin, even if you're launching your own, I would do a dollar cost average strategy, which is like slowly get in. And that way you're agnostic to like little price surges or price drops. Does that make sense? Perfect. Thank you. Thank you again. For, sorry. Just a little bit slow for me to pull out my phone. Okay. Nice Thank to see you, Kai. Yeah, nice to see you. <laughs> Brilliant, brilliant. So yeah, what I want to do is welcome some more questions. If you're new to the NFT and the crypto um, and you want to ask some questions um, around this, who is there and not on the stage that wants to ask questions? Sharon, good morning. Good morning. Um, thank you very much, Jennifer, for that great masterclass. Um, yes, I um, don't really know much about um, NFTs or crypto. I've, I, I'm learning as much as I can about it, but... Um, 
I did recently put um, about three hundred pounds into Coinbase into crypto, and I've I've just left it there really. And um, it was when um, Bitcoin was um, on the decline. Um, it's gone. It's it's dropped further since then. So the value of what I put in has dropped by about a hundred pounds. Um, is there anything that I should be doing with this, or should I just leave it? <laughs> um, I think I uh, what I do is set it and forget. It because like I got it in several years ago uh, in Bitcoin, and then when they were, when we were going through what we call bear winters, I totally forgot about it, <laughs> and it was also uh, on my hard wallet. So the other thing I would suggest for you is that if you're intent on holding it long term, anyways, and uh, everyone, I mean most of the people I know are quite bullish on Bitcoin and Ethereum and things in the long run. Um, then, you know, they, there's a reason they call it digital gold, and it's like a, you know a good benchmark, and there are a lot of things that are now tied to it, um, like. It's not, you know, it's no longer agnostic. Um, but exchanges can get hacked, right, at any given point. And, um, uh, and in terms of security and also hackers of your own wallet, it's best to, like, um, not only make sure never to give out your seed phrase, but also um, if you have any, like, long-term um, sort of holding, I would transfer that to a cold wallet. So, for example, some of the crypto hedge funds we are LPs in, they store our crypto um, and the stable coins because they will be trading in and out at that massive velocity, you know, many, many, many trades an hour or so that they can like time it. But they will um, they they work with uh, 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 companies that are um, uh, such as like BitGo to insure like millions, for example. So I'm not saying that you should go out and like look for insurance on this amount. But I mean, that's really good that you got in. Um, and this this definitely I, I don't think the long term price is going to be like lower than you got in. I think, you know, like this is something to, to keep. It's like basically, you know, my grandmother's jewelry. I will, I will hold on to that unless there's like, uh, uh, you know, I'm, unless I'm in desperate times, I'm not going to, you know, go, go sell it. Um, and then I would suggest that as you have more liquidity, then maybe start to um, do a dollar cost averaging strategy. I would actually, what I try to do is I try to get a little more when it's low. And then same with Ethereum. So that way when, you know, uh, I can, you know, collect different NFTs every month. It's, it's kind of like my, I don't want to call it my shopping or investment budget, but you know, if I see one I like, then I, I'll be like, oh, I still have a little ETH left over. You know, I'll go get some. Um, so I think it's a, a, always a good idea to, you know, set it and forget it. Don't worry about it. And then if you see drops, then accumulate more. So that way your average price of getting in is lower. Does that make sense? And then, and, and then investigate the other coins too. Like Ethereum is good. I think Solano earlier, someone was mentioning Cardano. Some of these uh, do billions in market cap, so you're you're not worried like it will suddenly like disappear. Yeah, I was planning on looking at Ethereum as well actually, yes. but yeah. um, can you just um, tell me what's the difference between a, you said a hard wallet and a something else? Okay, so wallet. a hard wallet is basically not connected to anything. So what, my example, some people use Ledger. I use a, a Trezor. So um, I will actually hold up my Trezor in front of those of you on my Instagram live. Otherwise, you can Google T R E Z O R. It's like my treasure. And I have the first generation one. That's how long ago I got it. Uh, but basically, um, it connects to your computer. And then what, uh, uh, what you do is you can transfer it to your hard wallet, meaning this Trezor device, which you, it has passwords and you know, your, another seed phrase. You transfer anything off the exchange or in your hot wallet, whatever is a connected exchange. So a hot wallet, for example, would be your MetaMask. But then there's a, a, a hard wallet or a cold storage portion of it, which is like your... Um, your MetaMask that connects to your Trezor. So you'd have to basically set up your own hardware so that basically uh, your your crypto wallet um, can keep the bulk of your wealth safe. Uh, I'm showing everyone my, uh, can't see my seed phrase. Everyone's looking at it on Instagram and waving at it. Okay. Um, yes, my, my okay, I'll wave back at you guys. Hi. So um, uh, yeah, basically with this um, device, uh, what cold storage means is when it's disconnected from everything. So that way, if there's something happening, your stuff is safe on basically what is a crypto hard drive. So that's what a hard wallet is. So I suggest you get one um, because it's a good way to safeguard your assets and also your future NFTs if you're collecting. And that way, you know, if there's like someone who snipes it or there's like a some random price reset, they won't be able to grab it um, away. Right. Like when okay. it opens and where, where, do, where do we get one of these? Amazon? <laughs> Amazon is good. I was actually sending one to one of my uh, friends in UK. Uh, he was part of the UK mod squad. But um, I was uh, unable to send it from my region. And sometimes uh, when crypto gets very hot, uh, all the hard wallets sell out. So I would actually go to the Trezor.io site uh, and get one. I should actually just include an affiliate link. It sounds like uh, I should yes. be making some money off of this. <laughs> and, uh, Trezor. Yeah. Trezor. 
T R E Z O R. I just like it because it more have more of a feminine appearance. But like some people like Ledger. Ledger is a good one as well. And they're just like any any uh, any uh, cryptocurrency hard wallet. Just look for hard wallet, and you will be able to find one. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, Chris, did you have a question, my friend? Hi. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of the Damien Hurst NFT. And I wondered what you thought about it. That's my question. Yeah, I love it. One of my friends um, is involved with that as well as, uh, yeah, like I I think any amazing artist, um, if they are become a digital asset, it's quite um, a good thing, right? It's, a, uh, it's like art. Um, like, so this is why I love NFT so much, the intersection of art, technology, culture, media, humanity, it's so many things, right? So um, I absolutely love, um, I love Damien Hurst, so I'm not, uh, not going to be impartial. And I, uh, I think whenever like people can team up with artists, collect their art on the blockchain, that's like provenance of ownership, that also ensures like authenticity. Um, and also, you know, full disclosure, like uh, uh, Pranksy bought a lot, a lot of Zipsies, which is the one I have in my profile. Um, they, they, they swept the floor getting like a hundred of them. Right. So I think when you ever, whenever you see like those people making massive buying moves, like for me, I, I, uh, I might get like, you know, a dozen, but I'm not going to be like, whoa, getting a hundred at a time. Some of these people do. Um, but when you see people like that sweeping the floor, that's a sign that it's probably going to be a good, good, um, good NFT. So the, I, yeah, the Damien Hurst one is great. I mean, um, you know, one of my team was involved in the the Banksy one before, as well as well as the, um, the 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 sorry, is the Beetle? Yeah, the Beetle one. Yeah, I wondered. You know, at, after twelve months, you have the option of destroying the NFT and taking a piece of art from him, or keeping the NFT and destroying the art. And I wondered what what you would recommend to do. Thanks. Um. <laughs> I can never destroy art. It's like a travesty. But like, for example, when I got the time pieces from the Time NFT drop, Time Magazine, um, I end up getting more for my kids' birth years and deciding to hold it so they can decide whether they want to burn them. So there were two from years that I didn't really care about. Then I was like, okay, fine, I burned them. And they're amazing. They're like, I mean, if you go to my OpenSea, which is very public, it's just jenniferchanglo.eth, you can see some of the artists that I collected. And I'm a long-term like hold forever. But then again, you're talking to someone who's like a, uh, a musician right so i have like videos from when i was like a, a a kid and my parents were like this would be amazing nft i'm like you're right but i'd only want you guys to hold it right uh or there was another one that i i i um did over the summer and it's on my genclub.com site but we might be taking it down soon because i just gave it to uh the family but i did an nft a music nft for a friend who was a clubhouse influencer who unfortunately passed away due to COVID, delta covid so that i just you know, there are some that like, you know, are pure art. Uh, there's some that are like, there's a reason why people are in NFTs, right? The art, the community or the money aspect or other aspects, right? So I would suggest that if you have have it or if you have more than one, then maybe you can burn one and keep the other. But that's one of the reasons why I try to get more than one so I can have the option of keeping one forever and the other I can get, go gift or I can trade or do something else with it. So yeah, I, right now I'm, I'm wondering that because I've collected over a dozen time pieces. I'm like burn or not to burn. <laughs> right. I hear you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Brilliant. Um, so guys, yeah, we have Jennifer here. So if you have any questions um, around NFTs, Mimi. Oh, hello. Thank you. Um, good morning, Jennifer. Fantastic masterclass. Thank you so good morning. much. Good morning. Nice to see you. <laughs> I just wanted to ask you, Jennifer, um, I, um, obviously I've got crypto and I know as Sharon was saying, that's sort of like, I've just left that as it is, mm -hmm. but I invested, I know they don't like the word invested, but I invested last year into hyper funds. Um, I bought 300 of the bonds and you're supposed to, you buy the bonds and they convert back into bonds. So every time you, you sort of like get an extra 50, then you reinvest it. I know they hate that word, but um, you, you buy more bonds and then they give you double for the money that you've, you've actually invested. 
So I think I've had that for about eight months now and I've left it and uh, there's about £4,000 that's been accumulated. So it's working. Um, I wanted to ask you, because there's a lot of big guys that are now jumping on this and they're claiming that they can make 100 k a month. And um, mm-hmm. what you do is I actually coach some of the coaches in there. So they, you can move up to expert, you can move up to diamond by, mm-hmm. by signing people underneath yourself. Then you get a cut of whatever they're, the money that they've made in their wallets. Um, before I invest any more money into it, can you give me your opinion of what you think? It, you know, if you think it's stable, if you, if you, you know, just your opinion about the whole thing, please. Okay, so um, I don't know because I didn't invest in this product, right? But then um, I would kind of beware of increasing more exposure. What one of the things I like to do is if there's something that's been winning for you already, is to reduce your exposure a bit and then to explore something you're scared about. That's one of the ways you hedge, right? And that's a, like a, what you call a classic pair trade. The reason why I say that uh, is because um, uh, you wanna be careful. Of course, you wanna like, what I do, obviously, if I, if I love a certain NFT or I believe like, for example, you know, Time Magazine, very solid institution, I wanna collect some history, then I will, you know, gift it to my friends and, and I would want to be, uh, 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 but if it's a newer product without like a really long sort of track record, um, I would be, I would caution because even like, uh, for example, I, we bank with some of the private bankers and some of them have made like not great decisions. Right. And some of them bought like, you know, other kinds of like bonds, super bonds, uh, other things, hard to multitask, uh, but I, I got it. Um, but, um, Mimi, I would suggest like, I, I wouldn't want to, um, at the risk of it sounding like too much like MLM, um, uh, I would like hold off and, and unless it's like you know just a simple referral scheme like an affiliate scheme i would try not to be too aggressive because one of the things i'm always worried about and one of the reasons why i've um, held off on managing opm which is other people's money for so long is i prefer to do co-investments and i don't recommend anything to my friends unless i'm in already so i think you can recommend it but don't go and be their main salesperson or anything and um because if something doesn't go well um then your reputation's on the hook and everyone's like oh my god you told me to do this and i just lost everything yeah, so yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, um, I, I invested a, a while ago in Traffic Monsoon. Same thing happened. I got, I got a great load of people to invest in it because it mm-hmm. was a great scheme at the time. It went past the, you know, they, they oh. took them to the, to the courts. And I'd never do that again. So this wasn't, I don't want to add people on. Yes. This was just a personal investment. And it's got, you hear such good, great write-ups. You know, they're bringing out their own cryptocurrency. They've got their own credit cards and they're investing in lots of different properties and things. I meant on a personal level, you know, if you knew anything about the company, because obviously with any company you research, there's good and there's bad. And then suddenly, you know, I hear all the good stuff about it, but I'm just wondering from your point of view, mm-hmm. somebody that's in this industry, have you heard of it? And do you think it's... I, I, I haven't. And then uh, for me, like, uh, like I have a sort of a magnet effect. So basically one of the reasons why I uh, we've actually turned off like any uh, investment submissions to our site is I was getting several thousand like unsolicited and I'm not even a VC fund right we're just invested in some VC funds and some hedge funds and like I said it's my private money <laughs> so uh, one of the reasons why is I, I feel like my uh, reputation is quite tied because uh, I've had more than a decade and a half of uh, success as an entrepreneur a serial exit entrepreneur investor so one of the reasons why I don't recommend little things to people um, uh, is because unless uh, it is I, I don't invest anything unless uh, or I, at this point, I'm so picky about my investments as well as what I'm involved with that unless there's like real unicorn potential, I don't get in. And then I don't get in uh, and I don't recommend it to my friends unless I see that there's like a, a high potential of exit uh, and like real traction. So I would suggest like maybe like um, uh, holding off before you get more involved because um, 90, I would say 99% of crypto projects as well as NFTs um, aren't successful ones. So you have to be careful because uh, you don't want to be in, caught up in like what was previously, you know, when I was young, there was a dot com boom and bust. Right. So you really have to pick the winners. Um, you really have to um, kind of see what's uh, uh, like you, you really have to uh, hedge your bets. Right. And then uh, and if you're not uh, an institutional or an accredited events investor, um, don't don't bring all your friends in. Otherwise, they will never listen to you again if it doesn't go right. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Jennifer. Thanks. And then you can say like, oh, pocket money can go in, things like that. Like, uh, it's like if I recommend my th- friend buy a dress and then she's like, oh, you sure it doesn't make me look fat? Yeah, no, no. I also have one. That, that's okay. <laughs> right. But don't, don't do it like investment advice. Thank you so much for that great, great question. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank you. Brilliant. Um, Bob, do you want to ask a question, 
Oh, uh, before the questions, I want to just quickly uh, have everyone, those of you new to the room, there are over 203 here and over 700 have joined us today. Thank you so much. Remember to follow the Winners Club. It's the Green Monopoly uh, house on top of my head. It's amazing. I actually just, I'm, a, I, I'm constantly here um, whenever I can between my kids' Zooms and my own meetings. Um, Ashley, James, Carol, and the moderators uh, who set up this room, they are uh, super um, uh Founts of Wisdom, uh, welcome Jennifer, Susan, Nichelle, Baiju, uh, Elaine, Credit, Lauren, Tal, Marvin. Those of you who haven't, remember to follow with Abel, some of these amazing Mod Squad, and as well as this club, the Winners Club. And remember to follow them on their socials. Uh, go to the link tree, and also uh, I will be tagging them in my socials later when it's uh, when I have my um, you know my, my tape. This is my first live cast, so I'm glad I got some of the technology working. Sorry, back to you, to Ashley. I think you're managing the stage in terms of questions. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much for that Jennifer and thank you very much for your time this morning so we'll hand the mic to Rob morning Ashley morning Jennifer morning winners uh, Jennifer I've got a couple of questions for you um, the first one is if art is subjective then where does the real value in NFTs lie yeah, so Rob, art is definitely subjective and it's in the eye of the beholder, right? And then what I look for, because I know I have a good eye for art and I have a good eye for business and I have a good eye for like looking, I, I can look at a business um, deck and inv investment deck and immediately tell whether there's investment potential. I, I, I have the same for NFTs and actually, you know, full disclosure, I've, I've collected art for a while. So it's not like I have been sitting around not collecting art. Um, my friends are famous gallerists, they own galleries, like I go to Sotheby's and Christie's regularly. So um, I think if you have a good eye for art or if you you like uh or your friends are or you go to you know right places then it's not just in the eye of the beholder you have to look at where the the thought leaders are but at the same time because of nfts um being tied to communities as well as um a, you know crypto and business there is more multifaceted than oh is that pretty or not right so that's just one of the factors to look at so i don't think it's just in the eye of the beholder it should be in like what you see in terms of um this nft being like a token it's a gateway and then other things you're going to see in terms of metaverses is the portability of nfts across the different metaverses right so you won't be just like like for me one of the reasons why it, it was very important for me to pick a, a picture where i look like it and it's an avatar and i'll be doing one-on-one -on -one collaborations with this gifted artist for example and then some other artists we have not announced yet is because I see their long-term vision to representing people, not just using the AI to generate, right? Although you can use AI to generate random traits, but also um, the underlying sort of like scaffolding of the art, whether it's generative art, whether it's like one of ones, whether it's a limited collection, the, the art has to be um, pure. It doesn't necessarily have to be just art. I've done a music NFT, right? Um, but the, the sort of the different creators involved, even like if you look at the creator fees as well as uh, the, the community, like um, if you look at different platforms like OpenSea, they now have a way to do op uh, uh, gas-free transactions for creators, which is, I think, a very amazing. Um, OpenSea is, uh, you know, pioneering a lot of uh, different things. But you can also look at other platforms like, you know, um, uh, looks rare. They have like incentivization for staking their token. There's a lot of ways that communities are interplaying out. So I think it goes beyond the art. I hope that answered your question. Thanks very much. And then uh, my follow up question sure. um, relates to World Mobile Token, uh, token on the Cardano um, platform. Just wondering if you could share some of. Yeah, I don't want to share things on specific tokens Just because. At the moment. Yeah, yeah. So for me, it's a conflict of interest to share things on specific tokens, especially when there's like a huge room. I'm not, uh, 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 I, I can't like give you like financial advice or anything. Um, but uh, I, I would just say like, you know, if there's a token on like, you know, and it's, uh, it, it's portable across different chains and it has utility, then, um, and then you believe in it and you've read the white paper, then it should be uh, okay. But just make sure it's not your only investment. And a previous, I mentioned that Cardano is a, a good a good token. Someone that was asking, uh, yeah, I hold it too. Uh, sorry, I don't know if uh, Rob was still speaking, um, but uh, I hope I. Yeah, no, that's great. Thank ah, okay. You. Thanks, Thanks, Rob. Happy. Thank you. I'm giving you a follow back now. Like the the background. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, Jennifer, I feel, I think you've stepped, um, come away from your mic a little bit on Clubhouse. Oh, so sorry. Uh, Let me, uh, you're using for Clubhouse. I am using the iPad. Um, Is it better now? Can you still hear me? Uh, it's really distant. Oh, shoot. Okay. Like, let me, uh, bring you up as close as possible. Is this better? Is my connectivity possibly? Can you hear me now? 
Yeah, that's that's better. That's better. Okay, yeah, I'm that's... just gonna hold it up really close to my face now, and then uh, I'm also <laughs> those of you who have just entered, please share the room. I'm about to share right now. Uh, I'm gonna say giving my first, uh, just uh, you know, this this uh, I'm giving my time freely, and uh, Ashley and, and the other amazing moderators here um, uh, are are basically. I'm just writing giving my first crypto NFT Web three masterclass on Clubhouse Web three. Oh, Web three. I'll just say in um, Winners Club. Okay, so if you guys can go ahead and share that, and also those of you uh, want to share it across your Twitter as well, I would, but I don't have enough hands to manage all my devices right now. But um, just go ahead and give it a share. Um, I know, oh wow, already um, since a few minutes ago, 754 of you have passed through this room. That's amazing. Um, there are about uh, 180 of you here now. The other thing you can do is click that plus sign. I like to attend conferences and seminars with more people. So I'll also actually do that as now as well. Ping some folks to the room that you think will get, gain some knowledge and um, will, would love to join this amazing community because, um, uh, you know, this daily in terms of the um, the discussions, the, the master classes and the sharings. So um, go ahead. I'm going to ping up and use up all my pings um, because at the very least, like, you know, I don't like to go to concerts or virtual events alone. It's so much better if it's uh, more attendance. So um, there you go. Uh, I'm going to, can you still hear me now? Ashley? Yep. Okay. Perfect. Lovely. Thank you very much for that, Jennifer. So, guys, let's, um, anyone got any questions around Web 3.0? Uh, that's making the background noise that wants to ch chime in. Hello, hello, hello on nodes right yeah yeah just what was your opinion on it? it's just my friend had invested uh -huh. um, some money into a node and um she's got quite a high return from that so i just wondered yeah. what your opinion was so a node is a great a node just basically means like it's almost like a stock split in layman's terms right so that means like basically the coin has gotten so much adoption or the project's gotten so much adoption it's branching off it's making more partnerships they're having standalone sort of branches or nodes so that's excellent. That's like basically you're getting a you know an awesome return on your investment. Now you're holding like two kinds of token. Um, like for example, if you look at like Bitcoin, there's like the original, there's Ethereum, uh, there's ECR twenty, there's like different um, nodes. The more successful a coin is, the more nodes apparently are are there, right? That just means that there's different variations. Like you can see with like Ethereum, they have ETH uh, or W E E T H, which is wrapped ETH. So nodes are great. I I, I wouldn't say no to nodes. <laughs> Oh no! Great, that's that's really helpful. Thank you. And my other just quick question was: I I, I invested last year in Safe Moon quite quite a substantial amount when they first started, and I'm just holding. And I, I remember when I first got it, I was constantly checking. It was just I think the excitement of buying my first bit of crypto mm -hmm. um but yeah I, I just wanted to say about your advice you just leave it and hold it now i don't look at it at all yeah just set it and forget it because it was it was extra money that you're not like oh my gosh i need this to like you know pay for my food and housing then then you know if you just like siphon away a little bit to save or invest into crypto or, or projects or things that you resonate with that's like basically angel investing right so what you i mean and that's important because some people are like oh i'm just saving for rainy day saving is not actually a good strategy like one of the reasons why I started my family office is because wealth, um, you know, even if you have transformative generational wealth, wealth erodes with the forces of like, um, you know, inflation and, and macro forces. So you need to make sure you diversify. So basically, if you're just like, you know, setting aside to invest in this and that and then like, you know, one of my relatives, they forgot that they had set aside like a sizable amount of money and we we you know that that uh that person i mean it was like a complete set it and forget it and then like oh my gosh like they had the, the money to go and really like finance the rest of their life without knowing it right because they they set aside some money before but the, what the thing about investing is that you have the potential to grow uh and then you have the advantage of time i was saying before we don't all we all don't have enough time right but one thing we do have is for our investments to work for us the, the investments have time we might not have time so i like to set it and forget it automate as many things as possible the other thing is like if you are like for me, I, I'm actually trying to like, my traders are already doing that for me. But uh, one thing I do is like, I try to go in like 
at least daily and then like oh if something's dropped i try to get a little more of it and then i'm like oh there's a winning one. Oh my god that went up 20 percent. let me take a little bit off the table oh great let me buy an nft with that that's awesome like so that's what i like to do the, remember to like take some of your winnings off the table and then if there's something that you think oh that's a also cut your losses right if there's something like damn that is really no that was a really bad move then it's okay if you can cut your losses if you've been like already giving it several months or a year or whatever that's fine no one wins at everything right but being a winner is knowing when to cut your losses knowing when to double down when to take that some of that winning off the table and uh, reinvest it and then one of the things that, that's good is that you know saving you what it means is that you set it aside but investing is meaning that you are actively watching and trying to grow that pot and that's the only way you can actively grow your wealth because otherwise your wealth is just stagnant and it's just sitting there but then if a, if it's a you know reasonable investment just set it and forget it and then keep looking for other things right great great strategy i mean that what you did and uh uh you know i think uh, what i'm very happy about too is that more women getting involved because uh, there's not actually there's a dearth of women in not only technology and investment and entrepreneurship but in web3 so this has actually been great because a lot of people are are going forward and, and doing that uh more now um so uh oh my goodness uh so my instagram live i think has ended um but i think that's okay i think i reached a time limit for it um uh, and then I will, uh, you know, continue on to see if anyone has questions. I also want to do a quick time check with um, Ashley uh, and, and uh, Mod Squad here to make sure that I'm not overrunning my time uh, here with you guys. We, we, we'll take, um, we'll take uh, around 10 more minutes of questions, Jennifer, if that's okay with you. Oh, that's perfect. That's fine. So now I can uh, single task. Okay with you. Of there, course. Jennifer? I'm here for Q&A and uh, yeah, yeah, so sorry, I, I forgot that I'm like, of course it's okay with me. I'm so honored to um, be able to deliver my first um, Web3, uh, hopefully in a series with uh, Winners Club here. And I am so happy to see, see so many people actively learning and participating and hopefully uh, clicking on that link tree and taking proper action. Love it, love it. So uh, let's take a few more questions. So there was, um, invite a few people, more people up to stage um, who would like to ask some questions around M NFTs, cryptos. Uh, Dave, good morning. Hi, uh, thanks guys. Uh, yeah, I've just got a, a question for Jen. So um, with so much information and resources out there to learn about the Metaverse 3.0, NFTs, etc., there's almost like a wealth of information. Would you recommend any like resources to go to to literally let this brain dump and learn from a, a particular place or, or, or people to follow? Because I've been in a couple of rooms with you where I now follow John Lee. I know it's slightly off the subject, but do you have like, I mean, could you like offer maybe a link or a, a brain dump of people to follow and places to, to like learn and, and research, research, research up on? Well, um, I don't have a, okay, well, so uh, John and I have a relationship off of Clubhouse as well. So um, it's not like uh, I'm just following him and I don't, don't know him either. Uh, and so like the people that uh, are in my trusted circle, for example, they're on my um, website, New Chic Capital. Um, and they're all like entrepreneurs and investors and you can go and look for their Twitters and their social media uh, as well as their LinkedIn's, right? Um, so I don't actually particularly... Um, uh, curate who I follow because I've been in uh, this space for a, a while since I was quite young and so um, I am a millennial for those of you who are wondering I'm a millennial mom of three so one of the things I try to do is like um, I look at it as like almost like play dates right I spend time with people that I want to learn things from and I do the same with my kids I don't let them like do you know like even before COVID I was not just letting them like fraternize with anyone so even when I um follow people uh I try to do it judiciously because it's impossible for me to have like too much of a feed so I don't have a uh sorry I couldn't give you more of a, a brain dump but like basically you know you should follow the moderators here they definitely set it up you know a really amazing you know master class in a series um daily series and uh, follow this club and um uh you know if you uh, want to go to my socials and see who I follow you can go ahead and do that too uh and on twitter like I'm only active sporadically because due to being in um greater china um slash hong kong right now um I don't always have constant access to full app functionality I know that uh looks like about 50 of you have um, DM'd me on Clubhouse. I actually can't check it. So one of my team might check it and tell you guys to DM us on Instagram because, uh, uh, again, like uh, I have limited functionality to different things. And then, um, uh, I mean, I get several thousand uh, um, emails a week. So uh, I, I just tend to um, try to surround myself with uh, 
winning folks. And then they also have to be like nice people. Because, uh, for example, I, I, I don't like it when people are um, uh, like, I stay away from trolls. So even if someone is like a really like successful person, if they are trolling at me on my Instagram or attacking me for being a bad mother for my own vaccination stance, I would avoid them. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. No, also just a massive shout out because I'm a, a dad of three, so I know how hard it is to balance. So a massive shout out to you for like balancing everything. Yeah, it's definitely hard. When I was actually having my first child was uh, when we were having a massive IPO. So after I had the C-section, I, like, <laughs> I don't know if Ashley likes hearing this in the room, but um, basically um, uh, my boss, the Crypto.com founder, he came into the room and he was like, hey, Jennifer, we're IPOing. And I'm like, oh, OK. And then uh, it was like I was just like, you know, literally still on painkillers and had just had a C-section. I was like, I thought you were my husband. And he was like, no, 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 you have to sign these documents so we can like IPO. And I was like, oh, OK. Great. <laughs> it's like very, very surreal. Very hard to juggle. You're right. Okay. Thank you, though. Thank you for all your information. Brilliant. Uh, brilliant. So, yeah, let's um, take some more, more questions. Um, who on stage wants to ask some questions around NFTs, crypto, Web 3.0, anything that's still unsure within that space? We have Jennifer here answering questions. Um, I understand there's been quite a few people raising their hands. Um, who here wants to ask some questions? I can hear people. Um, da, 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 da. Is it AI? A, a, Aileen? It's Aileen. Aileen, perfect. Do you want to ask a question? Yeah, uh, so um, good morning. Um, here in San Francisco. So um, I was just asking, wanted to ask um, any of you guys a question in regards to, um, you know, trying to transfer, you know, monies from like, let's say you did, like crypto, uh, w sorry, when you did the NFT and you're trying to move your NFT over to, from to your wallet and that, because my my eight year old nephew, he he does a lot of graphic artwork and so he does various stuff, including sports graphic artwork. So I decided. Okay, so what I would do is, um, what is the the, the your your nephew's uh, NFT basin? Is it Ethereum? I'm assuming uh, most of most NFT projects right now, at least the ones on OpenSea, are Ethereum. Uh, so he he did the the Crypto.com version. You know, Crypto.com is an exchange, so they would probably. Uh, I'm I'm betting it's probably Ethereum is the the. Ethereum. Okay. Okay. So then you would just transfer Crypto.com is fine. I I love Crypto.com, but what you would do is right. like if you want to transfer NFTs, then make sure in your hard wallet it's connected to your uh -huh. Trezor or connected to your ETH account ETH, which is Ethereum. You don't want to transfer it to a Bitcoin okay. one because there's very few. I don't think there are Bitcoin. Um, generally, no Bitcoin um, NFTs. Right. Uh -huh. So uh, Ethereum is the one that's most used right now. Uh, Polygon right. is also used, but then basically make sure your wallet is compatible. Go into your hard wallet. I don't know what wallet you have, but for me, when my Trezor, I would go in and um, pick. Uh, it would generate uh, the the right code, uh, uh, the right wallet address. It would be like a chain uh -huh. of uh, letters for you to transfer right. it to. And then the other thing is that if you want to test it out, if you have a tiny bit of Ethereum, like I don't know, like ten dollars, twenty dollars, then do a test. Uh -huh. Do a test transfer first. Don't transfer everything all at once. Okay. Make sure it's the right destination. Do a test transfer. I would do that with anything too. Like when I do wire transfers too, I mean, you don't want to like transfer like $100,000 over at once. You might want to do a test transfer of a few hundred dollars or something, right? So um, so when you do the transfers, the test transfers, um, you, you don't have to, you, you can just do like $10 or something, $10. Yeah, or whatever the minimum is, whatever the minimum is, and you pay the gas fee too okay. as well, right? Whatever the okay. gas fee is that particular instant, right? And then the other thing right. I would also suggest when you're transferring anything, to so make sure it's not lost, it's to uh, take a picture and also copy paste the TX ID, which is the transaction okay. ID. That's like, okay. that's like if you did a wire to a bank, then you take a picture of that wire and you're like, okay, okay. well, it gets lost. Here it is for customer service to sort it out. Otherwise, like if you don't copy the TX ID, which is the transaction ID, or if you don't, uh -huh. you know, take a picture of it and screenshot it, then you have no, no recourse if you, you know, you lose some digital assets. Right. Okay. Yeah, because um, I was trying to help him out since he's eight. And so I was trying to, and, and I didn't, and I, I'm still learning how to do it too. So it's like, <laughs> I was trying to figure it out and I couldn't figure it out for him. <laughs> and that, uh, that's why when I saw you guys on here, I was like, oh, maybe I can try to help you out, try to learn something at the same time. Yep. 
I think, uh, uh, you know, just uh, be very careful when you're handling your digital assets to make sure the destination path and everything you copy paste, double check everything. Um, I would do that with any kind of transaction, not just the crypto and the NFTs. Okay, thank you very much for your advice. Brilliant, brilliant. We'll take a question from Agdi and then Elaine. Hi, Jenny. So you really inspired. I've been listening to you for the last year, if I'm not wrong, because we kind of like jumped on Clubhouse about the same time last year in January. My question is, right, what are your thoughts that um, with NFT, are NFTs uh, going to be uh, the future of art and collectibles? Um, yeah, I've been in various rooms recently where there are a lot of people talking about that any NFTs that have been created now are going to be worthless uh, in the next five years. Uh, what due diligence could people do to protect their investment? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that one. Thank you. Okay, so one thing I like to do, and by the way, great question, um, uh, Jack Deep, is that um, I only collect an NFT unless, uh, when I'm like, wow, I love that creator, reputationally quite intact, track record, etc. Like I look at it as a long term hold. Like uh, earlier, we were talking about like different artists who have reached a certain level of cachet, and you wouldn't be wrong. They're not gonna like even right now. You know, if you go get a uh, Picasso or Matisse, people are not gonna be like, wow, that's gonna go to zero. Of course it won't, right? So if it's like um, a very sort of a uh, really reputable, I'm not just saying like you know pop star famous person is backing it as well as the art you can uh, see it it's great like for me i'm going to be using this as my profile picture forever like i intend to hold it forever um i, I would not part with it at all like right at all <laughs> so sorry like i've been offered a lot of money for it and i'm like no so sorry i'm not going to because this is like the art is like you know something i really connect with um so that being said um, uh, I have uh, diversified by making sure I invested not just in the right communities. Some of them turned into metaverses. So we have over invested in over eight, oh, possibly nine metaverses now. And, um, and one of them, actually two of them I discovered on Clubhouse, right? And really early on. So I wasn't like sitting there being like, oh, are they in Web 3.0? One of the reasons why we invested in them is because they were so authentic about what they were doing. So I think if, if you have like real teams solving for real challenges, and real communities and real substantial, you know, real solid foundation being built, then it will be okay. They will be around even in the next few years. Like for example, me, I'm not going away. Like tomorrow I'll still be a pianist. Like, you know, yesterday I was like, you know, when I was a kid, I was right. So if, if you're investing in something that has already like a track record and legacy, then it will have holding power in the future. The other thing I try to do, which I just try to allude to is that I've invested in platforms, communities, metaverses, coins i've diversified i haven't just been like let me just like pin it all on one nft and safeguard that investment definitely not and then the other thing is i look for like really good ones with like one of the reasons why i like the time magazine one is because they gave me a lifetime subscription to time magazine and they gave me a drop and i'm like wow that's awesome and they gave me a passport to do other things so i suspect with the you know the winners club as, as they go into you know web3 one of the things they're going to do is make sure that their nft is not just a one-off it'll probably be a membership it'll be a community it'll be other things and allow you a, another kind of access. Same for me, like I, one of the reasons why I didn't want to do a coin, um, and one of the reasons why I want to tie to other people's coins and cross collaborate is because, uh, you know, aside from doing BitClout before and, um, uh, you know, just treating it as a experiment, really, because there was no offboarding, I just wanted to see, and then like my market cap reached 100K within a day. Um, it was just, I, it was just like, honestly, it was just like looking at, um, looking at it as an experiment and i you know i didn't like if i do an experiment i will put a little bit of money to test something like it's almost like a b testing right so again if like i have a company that's done really well and one of that was like a uh a, a cancer vaccine that ipo'd uh like a year and a half after we got involved and then we uh recommended it to a, a big fund and then we became lps in that uh, fund slash operator they're on their way to an ipo and then you know some really famous tech investors co-invested with us and we topped up in the series c so at that point i was just like we were so early in that you know you protect your best investments by topping up and doubling down if it's working out then do that and then if there's a time for liquidity then take some off the table and reinvest in other uh good projects so that's how i would say just keep evolving and iterating and um, try not to plan for all the black swan events because some people were like wow your portfolio must have been doing really badly because of covid but actually no like some we had like eight ipos icos and unicorns last year and they were accelerated because of covid right some some stuff especially in the community and ed tech i mean ongoing education space like this what we're, we're seeing with winners club the, these are like they've been showing up every day so i don't think that they're gonna suddenly like you know not show up i'm here right um 
And so, uh, yeah, I hope that was able to shed some light, Jagdeep. But if you see consistency and if you see people being consistent, then that's usually a, a good sign. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Elaine? Thanks a lot, Ashley. Oh, How hi, Elaine. It's been a while. How are you? Great to see you. I love the glasses. Well. <laughs> How are you? hope you're well. Um, I want to ask you a question. Um, being is that I met you on the app quite early on and um, you've achieved so much. Where do you see yourself and your investments in the next five years? Okay, so um, I'm actually starting a bunch of things. Um, some of it's in stealth mode, but one thing that I'm going to be quite public about is um, uh, my best friend has been managing my money for over a decade. And she's actually my, my, my main partner at um, my family office. And she's, uh, you know, I know she's great because she's been like godmother to my kids as well. And uh, you're my best friend from business school. And I watch this girl because she's good at what I'm not good at. Uh, so I try to continue to surround myself with people who are better than me in their different expertise. Like, I'm really scared of trading. Like, I like to buy things and hold them. And they're my treasures. She lets me know when to get out of things. And she lets me know when the momentum is. And she's an amazing trader. She's actually been in World Poker Series twice, right? So we're going to be launching Ace uh, investment management, which is the hedge fund that Ashley was just mentioning earlier, because, um, you know, she's privately ma uh, managing like, you know, upwards of 50 million pri privately, right? And for a different, you know, a handful of us investors. And then we decided like, well, she's been so good at getting that alpha for us that we need to, um, you know, extend that model out so other women know that, you know, there are great investment managers out there. For me, um, I just want to like, continue role modeling for my kids. Like, so actually, since we last talked, I, I actually, uh, my daughter and I both won in another international piano competition representing US uh, outside of Hong Kong. And um, it was uh, the Polish uh, consulate um, International Avenue Chopin competition. So uh, one of the reasons why I did that was to show them that I could and lead by example. So I hope like I'll be able to get, you know, other folks to set up their own personal legacies because one of the things is like, you can go from, uh, you know, entrepreneur, exit entrepreneur, angel, angel investor, you always have to kind of invest in other people, not just yourself, whether it's like resources and time. But one of the, I have like lots of clips now, which is a, this is my first um, li live stream Clubhouse Masterclass. So, and there's a visual component because I was actually uh, doing a, a interview with a US media uh, right before I got on this. So my, my hair looks good and I'm wearing nice jewelry. Some of you on the Instagram live and commenting on that. So um, yeah, so what I was gonna say is that I really wanna lead by example. I don't wanna just be like sitting there talking about things. So uh, I wanna, uh, and one thing I'm doing with my community in which we're actually morphing into um, more of a metaverse play uh, with some of the metaverses that we're cross pollinating with is um, to really uh, create a platform where we can accelerate each other, right? As well as um, uh, I wanna build a, I think still key is um, content. Content is definitely key. Community, uh, curation, and uh, being a real creator. So that's what I intend to keep doing. Um, I do have uh, other ventures launching as well as, um, uh, you know, I'm a beauty entrepreneur as well as a fashion entrepreneur and the luxury one. So I'll have some more things coming out in that space because um, my uh, beauty line was formerly at Harvey Nichols and Sephora. Um, and then some of my other portfolio companies are making acquisitions both in, uh, I mean, in Asia, North America and uh, in Europe as well, uh, as well as Latin America. So I want to explore more in other regions too, including um, MENA and uh, Africa. Um, so uh, hopefully we'll be able to have some more time to do that. And then I think uh, the other thing I'm trying to do is make sure I automate and be able to deliver value to many. So I really appreciate, I want to thank again, Ashley uh, and James and uh, you know uh, Mod Squad here of Winners Club for really setting up uh, a forum for us to collaborate genuinely and authentically with each other and make those real connections and real actions happen. Because I, I think it's, uh, it's really hard to um, be able to uh, like I would not be able to answer like hundreds of DMs or, or thousands of emails at once. You need a team, right? So I think um, more and more I'm going to be, you know, curating my inner circle, curating my projects, looking every so often at what, you know, what I need to do to stay on top of it and be fast enough to spend time with my loved ones. I mean, I think at the end of the day, all of us are trying to um, increase our ability to use time effectively and be with our, you know, lovely, you know, kids, our family, uh, and, you know, the, the, our, and, and also our chosen families, you know. Thank you. Um, I think when you, when you decide to get to Africa, give me a call. You have my number. Um, but I was going to ask one last question, if I may, actually. 
Uh, sure, I think that's fine. Yeah. Um, I know you talk about your children a lot, and most of us who are, you know, um, business people and um, parents talk about our children a lot. Are there any things that you've invested in specifically for your children, not in terms of just like legacy? Like, have you set up, have you bought NFTs for your children or anything like that? Yeah, my kids actually have been having the crypto wallet since uh, several years back as well. So I actually taught my kids how to um, diversify because I was like, oh, we don't all want to be in Bitcoin. We want to get some of this. And uh, it looks like Zcash is private. And then I had them like look and uh, my, my daughter was quite precocious. She was like reading some white papers and then she wanted to um, she said we should launch our own coin. And then um, my daughter and I also did um, with Soho House. We did a collaboration with a famous uh, UK artist called Leanne Claxton. And we raised $300,000 for women's cancer um, a, a few months ago. So it was on display. At, uh, and then we're in the process of turning that into an NFT. Uh, we collaborated with a lot of different organizations, including like, you know, Habitat for Humanity, Make-A-Wish Foundation, um, lots. Right. And then one of the things I want them to know um, is that, you know, we make an impact not just through... Um, uh, investing in the fishermen and but we also have to give them some fish right to tie them over as they learn how to new, use new technologies to to fish or use like you know non-fish fish or uh to, to make things more sustainable i think um one of the reasons why i want other people to also start their own family the future um which is like we need to make sure not only our wealth is preserved but also to um disseminate it to others and to share in that right so uh um, my kids definitely have NFTs. They have crypto. Um, they have real estate. Uh, my 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 uh, my daughter is already. Uh, we okay. Full disclosure. We we also have like real estate in the metaverses. We have land in sandbox. Uh, my daughter's designing games in there. Um, she has a Roblox business. Because I, I also believe in the power of teaching your kids the value of money and and the value of hard work. So she asked me for more Robux the other day, and I was like, so sorry. Can you design another pet to sell in the pet store in Robo Roblox? And uh, and then if you earn enough, then you can go get that new outfit that you want for your avatar, right? And we've also invested in avatar companies. We've also invested in food tech because uh, I'm largely a vegan, although I do eat seafood. And so um, we invested in some food tech companies that are also unicorns. And, and, and they helped me pick them. They helped me pick, they helped me pick these companies because I could see where they were eating and they, I could see their well-being. And um, yeah, and then one of the reasons why we invested in cancer is I've lost five relatives to cancer, right? So, um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that, um, you know, when I, when I make an investment, it's because there's a, a real reason other than just chasing the return. Because I think real sustainability in terms of your investments are when you're making really impactful um, decisions. Thank you. Brilliant. Um, I'll come in. Do you, you got time for one more question, Jennifer, and then we'll wrap up? Thank you so much, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you get it? Uh, Michelle, do you want to go? And then we'll wrap up the masterclass if you like. Michelle, was you flashing? Yeah, lovely. Thanks, Ash. Uh, Jennifer, there's... God, crikey, what a whirlwind. Um, I thought I was busy. Um, so my question is, what is that journey for your teenage daughter uh, in terms of you introducing her to Soho House and her having that... Uh, collaboration and then creating an NFT through that. Yeah, that so my daughter was seven at the time when we did it. She's eight now. She's not teenager. Oh, right. Yeah. So we've uh, <laughs> so they've been they've been coding. To meet the owners of the Soho House. And, so I was just trying to understand what that looked like. No, no, no. Um, and we they've been massively outreaching to us because my daughter's also won um three international competitions for piano and she studies with some of the, actually some world renowned artists because she's actually. Um, very, very, very uh, good at art. Um, like she can draw very realistic things and she can actually draw most of my NFTs even. So she's quite talented. Um, and like me, she was invited to perform in different things at a very young age everywhere. So uh, it was more of a, uh, you know, I just put up uh, her website and then, you know, then I realized that like I was getting a lot of requests. And so we have a management team which uh, entertains that um, as well. Uh, my son too, like uh, uh, Ferrari and other brands have asked him to model. Uh, um, and then they've both been coding and doing Latin since age two. So, uh, uh, I mean, they, they uh, I mean, full disclosure, I, I went to college at a very early age or started college, college courses when I was like 13. Um, and I took Mensa, I joined Mensa when I was six. So my kids, uh, like their father, they're um, uh, very high performing. <laughs> so, um, they, they've been um, very vociferous about what they like and they don't like being bored and uh, we do uh, investments as a family all the time. Thanks. 
back to you. Brilliant. So that will conclude this morning. So first things first, what I want to do is say thank you very much, Jennifer, for your time this morning. Um, if we could all give a mic clap, give Jennifer a follow over on her socials. Um, and is there any final words today, Jennifer, you would like to wrap up with? Um, I can see the response from the audience right now. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Is there any final words you'd like to say? Sure. Uh, first of all, I, I w uh, want to thank again, um, Ashley, uh, uh, James, Jennifer, Nichelle, Baiju, Elaine, Credit, Tal, Marvin, everyone on stage, right? Oh, wow, a lot of you guys are the OGs and some of my friends here. So I really appreciate you guys for giving me the time. Um, and uh, uh, I know a lot of you guys are... Okay, so for those of you, I see a lot of messages coming into my um, uh, back channel on Clubhouse. The, the, the DMs are kind of broken for me. So I get maybe about 20% of them if I get them at all. Um, so if you guys follow me on Instagram and DM me there, I'll be like a little more responsive. That's even where like Ashley and I first started talking, <laughs> um, because, uh, because my DMs are so broken. Um, but, uh, I really, you know, time is that one resource that we will never get back, right? There's a Chinese saying that like, um, one inch of gold won't buy you back one minute of time. And the reason why I say that is because like, you know, I can make money, I can make crypto, I can make investments, I can lose money, I can, you know, like lose an empire. But time is that one thing that all of us are in short commodity of. So I really thank you guys all for creating such a wonderful forum um, and community for discussion. And I thank you guys, everyone here from moderators to speakers on stage to listeners and audience for um, making the magic happen uh, and for contributing to such a wonderful uh, discussion today. I hope I piqued your interest in um, Web3, that you guys will continue to lean in. And I look forward to collaborating further with the Winners Club. Those of you who haven't followed them on their socials as well as this club, it's a travesty. And remember to follow the moderators with a bell. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Jennifer. You can now go and see your family and uh, <laughs> yeah, pop in when you can. And thank you very much for your time this morning. I appreciate you. I'm sending warm regards to your gorgeous little girl and, um, and also uh, hope to see the winners and uh, guys uh, uh, join this community if you haven't already. I, I love this community being a part and being able to share a little bit of my experiences with you all. Brilliant, brilliant. You're now, you're now